Hello everybody and welcome! Bryn and I are back for another list where we are ranking various cards and we're on to the Guardian Melee Weapons. So let's have some fun and dive in uh, from 17 to 1. Um, and let's see where things fall. So our first card we got here, number 17, to the surprise of probably like no one, it's Trench Knife. One cost, takes up a hand slot, so it's cheap. So you're like, man, it's it's not got to do much to make it good, but it also has to do something. Uh, so engage actions, you now perform attacks of opportunity, and as an action you can fight. You get plus X fist for this attack, where X is the number of enemies engaged with you. Yeah. Uh, I don't personally remember the last time that I was faced with the prospect of engaging more than two enemies. Mm -hmm. um, and this card is mostly just knife without the cool part, where you get to throw it away for extra damage. Yeah. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's at the bottom mostly because it is not a weapon. It is a utility tool mm -hmm. that you're probably holding in the bandolier so that you don't provoke attacks of opportunity when you are engaging enemies. You'll know if you want it. Yeah. If you if you want your accessory slot um, and you don't want to play Riot Whistle, you yeah. can play this. Um, notably, you might be saying, "Hey, what about um, swarming enemies? This is bad against swarming enemies because you like with swarming enemies, you want to deal multiple." Like, you want to deal excess damage so it carries over. Yep. This doesn't do that. This will take forever to kill cats from Saturn. Yeah. Even, like, the, the spiders, which are, like, one attack, like, one health. Yeah. That's three actions to kill three spiders. It's That's not great. brutal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, on to our number 16, which is Blackjack level zero. One cost. Again, you know, it's pretty cheap. Fight. You get plus one fist for this attack. If you perform this attack against an enemy, engage with another investigator, and you fail, you deal no damage. Yeah, the only time I've really ever played with this card is um, to remind me that I want this level 2 blackjack mm -hmm. as soon as possible, because if I don't, I'm going to have to play another scenario with this in my deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I did play it one other time to make Travis mad, because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, it's not good. It doesn't, like, I mean, it works okay, I guess, but okay, I guess, is not what I'm hoping for from my cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a little bit more. If, it did, if this did uh, did extra damage, I mean, it would also be nuts at one one cost. But yeah, uh, even, yeah. Even if it was just like plus two to the fight, mm -hmm. no extra damage, that'd be all right. Yeah, I could live with that. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't much to say. Bryn said it all. The cards just kind of not great. Yeah, like it's just kind of not good. Yeah. Number fifteen is Blessed Blade. This is a three cost. Takes up a hand slot. Uh, Fight, if it's ready, you get plus one fist for the attack. If a Bless or Elder Sign token is revealed to its attack, it deals plus one damage. Before revealing Chaos tokens to the attack, you may exhaust it to add a Bless token to the Chaos Bag. This isn't a weapon you fight with. This is a utility tool to get Bless tokens in the bag. Yeah, yeah, you've you've heard you've heard Justin and probably Travis and probably even me complain about how bad Song of the Dead is because you have no idea when the extra damage is coming out of it. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Yeah. You don't, like, it's very hard to make that work. And if you have, you've spent a lot of XP trying to do it. Yeah. For example, uh, you're like playing Favor of the Sun. Yeah. Yeah. Which is probably not worth it for one extra damage one time. Mm -hmm. Well, three three times, I guess, if you got Favor of the Sun. But uh, it does do a very good job of making sure that the blessed tokens in the bag are topped yeah. up every turn. Yeah, and, it, and it's really good for that, but you're like not fighting with this. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not good for that. Yeah, the weird thing that this one kind of does is that it's like... A good way of turning your uh, three health enemy into okay. I'm okay with attacking it twice. Yep. Um, but it ain't worth <laughs> the juice. <laughs> no, yeah. it's uh like like in a blessed deck. Uh, yeah. That's as, like as yeah. a weapon, it's a niche tool, and there's another one that's way better, and you should invest the XP into that instead of cards to make this work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll get to it. Yeah. Number fourteen here is the Butterfly Swords level two. So this is a three cost. As an action you fight, you get plus one fist for this attack. After this attack, uh, you may exhaust Butterfly Swords to fight again, adding your foot to your skill value for that attack. This attack deals plus one damage. This takes up both hand slots. So notably, mm -hmm. both of your hand slots. Yeah, that's like the main issue here. It is also like a very convoluted way to deal an extra damage. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to pass that second test, so on higher difficulties it's not even viable. And, uh... Why? You know, for less XP you can just I a machete, mm -hmm. even if you didn't include one in your starting deck. And it takes up one hand and does almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cool and all, but... Yeah. I mean, I think, like, the... Especially Butterfly Swords 2. Like, I think there's, like... Well, we're going to get to Butterf Butterfly Swords 5 eventually. There's a home for it. 
Um, but I don't think this one has a home, like you might be saying, but Skidzo Tool can play it. Yeah, that is true. Skidzo Tool can play it. Yeah. <laughs> um, like he could. But like that's like it, that's like one of those things where you look at it and you're like, you're having fun. You know, you're doing something yep. a little bit wild and a little bit crazy. But sometimes wild and crazy is only like 14 rank you know like it just it lives down there it doesn't doesn't make it good um, I, yeah i've never felt so cursed playing this game as i have playing rex murphy with his curse in play because i had to draw two tokens for every test this oh, does that yeah, too it does do that yeah so uh, that's a personal reason why i don't like it this one probably actually like i think it's just like even like if it was like level one i'd be fine to like use it as a holdover but if i'm playing a butterfly swords deck i don't want to stop at this one like yeah. i don't even want to stop here i think if it didn't have to exhaust yeah and like instead, maybe you had to succeed the first half. Yeah. To get the second half. Uh, that would be more interesting, even. Yeah, because it's like one of those things where like how this thing works. Like, say you have like a, so you you do your first attack, you deal three damage in theory, right? But then your next attacks are all one. <laughs> yeah. Like that's not great. That's not a good damage output. No, I think uh, if this is the kind of effect I want, I would rather play Sledgehammer Zero for my three damage single fight action weapon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even if it's not really a single fight action mm -hmm. next one is the hungering blade so this one's a little bit funky uh it's only one hand slot limit one per deck and you get to search your bonded cards three copies of bloodlust and shuffle them into your deck uh is it a fight action you get plus one fist for each attached copy of bloodlust this deck deals plus one damage if it defeats an enemy you place a resource on this card as an offering and i'm pretty sure bloodlust is you have to remove two offerings and if you don't you like take a you take a horror, horror. and shuffle it back. Yeah, otherwise, if you can, you attach it to the hungering blade. Yeah, and the more bloodlust you got, the more hungering the blade is. It's good times. You can also, as a lightning bolt, shuffle the shuffle a, an attached bloodlust back into your deck as part of the attack to have caused the attack to deal one more damage. Only you can only shuffle one of them per attack. You can't just stack them all up and be like, "Cool, here's five. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a cool card. We always say this one's damn cool. If you could play two of them, this card would be much further up the list, I think. Mm -hmm. But as is, it's so hard to make this work, because you have to find it. Yeah. Which means you're playing a different weapon, and you're probably doing just as well with that weapon. Yeah. <laughs> you're just you like, yeah, playing, you're just playing like Machete, and you're like, yeah. I'm just going to keep this out, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's really cool, and I wish it were just like a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I should have, uh, in our Taboo... I should have. Oh, we should have. Yeah, I should have, like, no, there's no limit one per deck. Give me your Hungering Blade, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was, there's a, in the, there was um, someone who made, I believe it was the custom Darkest Dungeon campaign, made some custom cards, and one of them was an upgraded Hungering Blade. I think it was, like, 3 XP or 4 XP, but it got offerings whenever it dealt damage, um, which, like, instantly made it so that it was a lot more viable to actually, mm. like, like, you find it. The problem is that you have to kill the enemy, right? To get the offerings going, and you draw, like, the wrong thing, and suddenly this card that you had to find yep. pay is, like, now hurting you, right? So, like, a more consistent way to also get um, offerings on it would also be, you know, helpful for that as well. Yeah. Uh, Rex Murphy getting changed also really hurt this card because he was very strong with it because mm -hmm. you could use him to also find the bloodlusts when you wanted oh, them. Oh, uh, so not Rex Murphy, uh, Mr. Or Rook. Not Rex Mr. Murphy, Rook, yeah. yeah, Mr. Rook. They're the same guy. Yeah, <laughs> they are. They're pretty much Actually, the same. Actually, like, yeah. they're the same person. Just, yeah. like, Secret Lord job. Just, just in different clothes. Yeah. It's, it's that's, crazy. That's some official secret PvG <laughs> yeah. lore information for all of you. <laughs> um, but yeah, because you could find them. Travis did that as yeah. a deck. And yeah. it was still, like, not good, but it was fun. You know, like, it was just more efficient for it. Yeah, it was, it was like, pretty okay. Yeah. All right, number 12, we got Sledgehammer Zero. Takes up both hand slots, three cost. As an action, you can fight. You get minus one fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. Double action, you get plus two fist and deal plus two damage for this attack. If you're playing this, it's for the double action. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much the only real home it has. I suppose if you're a five punch investigator, you could also get away with it. Yeah, but you have to do like but, a lot of work and you're just like... Yeah, it's only, it's only good in the early scenarios anyway where you can afford to be like, I'm actually a four fight investigator sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the three damage is a big payoff. Um, three damage for one test is, um, as we're spoilers currently discovering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I, I think the design on this weapon is really cool. I think this is like one of the, like a very flavorful design because you swing it like a little baby. Like, you know, you're like, yeah. ah. but then you like really put your energy into it. And it's just like, and it's also such a good, like, especially the upgraded one when we get to it. Um, but like, yeah, you're, you're using it for the bottom action. Um, but then like, unless you're Dan, like Daniela or Mark using it for the top action, yeah, but then you're like also having to build around it once again. If you want to like just succeed, um, it's better to do, you know, other weapons because then you're gonna have to. Like, I'm gonna need my B cop. I'm gonna need other things to put my fist up. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can. I mean, you can slap reliables and such on this. That, thing is, that would also like, be that's fun. That's also pretty okay. Yeah, I should. Um, I should do that. That seems like but, a fun deck. Um, yeah. All things considered, uh, it's not incredible. Yeah, I think at this point now we're in like, it's, we're in the point where like these cards are like. They have their homes and they're yeah. playable, but uh, they're like not. It, it's entirely workable. Yeah. It just... yeah. All right. Number 11 is Butterfly Swords 5. So this is a three cost, two hand slots, five experience. Fight as an action. You get plus two fists for this attack. After this attack, you may fight again, adding your foot to your skill value for that attack. If both attacks are successful, you may exhaust Butterfly Swords to have the second attack deal plus one damage. Yeah, so it's like same same problem again. Um I've seen what you can do with mm -hmm. five XP weapons, mm -hmm. and brother, this ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, it's really not. It is uh, like you, there are so many cooler things that you could be doing with uh, like with that five XP per card than this. This could, yeah, this could uh, have. Been. I think I think this one could have very easily been four. Yeah, I agree. And it would have been fine. Yeah, um, it could also. I think this one also could probably get away with not having to exhaust for the attack if it required you to succeed at the first part mm -hmm. um, i don't know maybe maybe i'm maybe i'm talking crazy because then it does three damage but uh, also it's a five costed weapon yeah cyclopean hammer just does three damage yes like almost yeah. all the time almost all the time so um i like butterfly swords in the two homes which are like lily chan and zoe because they have like yeah. elder signs that you want to fish for. That's what Butterfly Swords is good for, taking a lot of tests. And I'll tell you, there's a hell of a drug with uh, having a bandolier in play and holding two Butterfly Swords and just taking like a million tests turn to try to fish out elder signs. Yeah, give them the old General Grievous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and it's a fun deck, but like, it's by no means where I look at it and I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's a killer card. Yeah, I, you think, know? It, I think it also has a, has a home if you're playing, uh, oh, what's her name? Nethys, I think. Mm, yep. Uh, or the other, those other kinds of cards that, uh, the blue cards that reward you for fishing out blessing yeah. tokens, like this will do that very well. Uh, is it worth 5 XP? Probably not. Probably not. But, uh, but it would uh, like actually, it, it mean, will do that. That would be a cool archetype for uh, Guardians to explore, which is yeah. more like token thing to see like them actually like, there's a reason that Butterfly Swords exists other than like, you know, being General Grievous. Yeah. Yeah, which is cool. Though. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. All right. Number 10, we're in our top 10. This is Survival Knife Zero. You might be thinking, how the hell did a level zero card beat a level five card? Well, because it's like equally efficient with no experience. <laughs> yeah, it kind of yeah. does a very similar job. Yeah, so Survival Knife, it's a fight. You get plus one fist with attack as a reaction after an enemy attack deals damage to you during the enemy phase. Exhaust Survival Knife, fight. This attack targets the attacking enemy. You get plus two fists and deal plus one damage with this attack. Yeah. This is pr probably the best uh, the best offhanded weapon in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, easily, yeah. Like, if you have a level zero bandolier and you're wondering what to put in it, it's probably knife. this guy. It's prob probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, you have to take the damage to get the extra attack, but you're playing blue cards. The, you can probably manage that. Yeah, or you're just Will Yorick. <laughs> also, or play, yeah. also playing blue cards, but... Yeah, uh, yeah. like, it's not actually that big a deal yeah um it's a cool card it's like it's just also like i think like at this point now we're starting to get into the cards where i'm like yeah this one's like this is like survival knife zero i'm like yeah i think it's a good to great card yeah. like we're starting to get there it's fun it's flavorful it's also just like damn strong yeah yeah just yeah. as free free points yeah we'll, we'll have more to say once we yeah. get to the upgraded version yeah so we'll, we'll we'll just stop briefly here before we dive in all right number nine is enchanted blade three cost takes up a hand slot and a spell slot uses three charges as an action fight you get plus one fist for this attack as additional cost to initiate the ability you may spend a charge to empower the blade if you do you get plus one fist and deal plus one damage for this attack 
plus two fist is a hell of a drug on a level zero weapon when it also does damage. Yes. You know, this uh, this pretty much is just better, mostly better than the uh, the forty five. Like, sure, you get one less uh, one less charge, but you also don't have to spend a charge on a one health hour or an odd health total yep. to enemy, which is huge. And it costs one less money, so you're pretty much like you're paying four money for four bullets or three money for three bullets. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same. Yeah. Uh, except this one gives you more options. Uh, I also love that, like, this kind of... I think this is, like, a very successful... Because um, I know Travis is very hard on the, like, multi-class cards, but I think this is a very good marriage of, like, of Mystic and Guardian. Like, just the charge... Like, turning a sword into a gun, you know? <laughs> like, I, and, like, turning it into a spell. And it feels like everything's there for a reason. But, like, as Bryn said, the biggest thing is... And the thing that I often forget until Bryn reminds me, is that even it happens on, like, Survival Knife sometimes, where I'm just like, I'm gonna just basic fight this guy. It's like, <laughs> you can just do it with Yeah, this. you can just do it with the card. You get a it bonus. Does, it does the thing. Yeah, yeah, it just does the thing, which is, like, gigantic. Because uh, that's the problem with spells and, and like, low-level guns, is that even high-level guns, like, having to fight a one-health enemy sucks. And this, you don't have to, you don't have to waste a bullet on it. Bullet. Quote-unquote. Yeah. All right, number eight. We have Machete, the old classic. Three cost, one hand slot. As an action fight, you get plus one fist for this attack. If the attacked enemy is the only enemy engaged with you, this attack deals plus one damage. So one of the same things that makes Trench Knife bad makes Machete good. Mm -hmm. uh, you're rarely going to be engaged with more than one enemy. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen very often. So this just kind of does plus one and plus one damage all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, which is ultimately, at the end of the day, what you're looking for from a weapon. A lot of the time, the machete, if it was in my starting deck, will still be in my deck at the end of the campaign because it is just a good weapon. Yep. Yeah, I think, like, the thing... that It also has gone on, like, a, a journey on the taboo list. Mm -hmm. It was tabooed for a bit yep. because, especially in the early game, it was just way too strong, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, now we got more cards, so it's... Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's true, like, I mean, like, especially in some campaigns, it's also weaker, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. But usually you're not, like, planning on fighting with just a machete, right? It's no, kind of just, like, there's there as well. There's something else going on often, too. But it's, like... it only takes up one of your hand slots, yeah. so... And it's, like, the perfect weapon to just, like, I need... T I need another weapon or two in my deck, so I'm gonna throw a machete in, you know? Um, it does have its downside where sometimes you're only attacking for one like one damage mm -hmm. but that it's i mean that's probably why it's sitting down here because it doesn't have like the explosive potential that some of the more higher level cards do or the efficiency yeah. of those cards. yeah it's not it's not exciting just good yeah just damn good yeah also pitches for a punch icon which is um like less of an oddity these days but on level zero weapons still not something you get all the time yeah yeah all right uh and then we have its brother blackjack blackjack 2 the level 2 card cost 2 Takes up a hand slot, fight, you get plus two fist for this attack. If you perform the stack against an enemy engaged on their investigator, you deal plus one damage. Hey, that's what the, the first one was missing, but I mean, on a level zero card, that probably would have been too strong. Uh, for the stack, if you succeed, mm. and no, and you deal yeah, no it, damage. If it you would fail. have had to cost like three to play or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, like Machete, this is actually very similar, and I've actually mm. done it a few times where my weapon's in my deck as the flex. Like in Joe Diamond, I actually commonly run Blackjack and Machete as my weapons. Um... Because, like, it's good. <laughs> like, it, it mm -hmm. like, works. Like, probably not as your main killer in, like, higher player counts. You could no. probably get by it in two-player, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this one, I when I play with it, I usually play it with the level zero safeguard and just don't upgrade my safeguard so then the other person grabs them yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's, like, it's, uh, it's a good weapon. It's not, like, fantastic, though, right? But I like it a lot. It's yeah. a good upgrade. Very much improved upgrade over yeah. its level it went up 10 slots from level zero to level two yeah and like uh, to be perfectly honest this one and the machete could very easily have been the other way around yep but uh this is how the cookie crumbled i have this one's cooler it is yeah because uh, you see it less so it's still yeah. like you're like wow is that a blackjack you're playing a blackjack <laughs> too right you're like oh yeah that's so sick yeah let's go yeah. run this in a leo or a skids deck with like cat bug or mm -hmm. Uh, like yeah. Think, think on your feet. You handle this one. You're like, I drew an enemy. You drew an enemy. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kill it before you play. <laughs> yeah. Because there's and it's like it's uh, such a big thing too, especially like, um, it allows you to also just like go ham on like vicious blows. You're mm -hmm. like, don't worry about it. You're a okay. 
Yep. Yeah, great card. All right, number six is the Holy Spear. Four cost, five experience, two hands, fight. You get plus two fists to deal plus one damage with this attack. When you initiate this ability, you may release a blessed token sealed on Holy Spear. As an action, you can also search the Chaos Bag for two blessed tokens and seal them on Holy Spear. Fight. You get plus four fist and deal plus two damage for this attack. We're just starting to get into the pile of cards that cost five XP and do the thing that Butterfly Swords wishes it could do. <laughs> Um, like this one this one does fairly consistently you know three damage attacks which is very good yeah two bless tokens is not hard to get yeah and there are a lot of cards that will allow you to spend the tokens that are sealed on your stuff yeah instead of in the bag as well um, this one's this one's just like kind of sweet yeah i mean like even the top fight action Plus two fist, plus one damage. That's yeah. going to kill most things. Like, that's, like, unless... I mean, like, there's a lot of time where, like, a, like I think a lot of people are down on Holy Spear because a lot of people play it in Sister Mary, which makes sense, you know? That's she like, does do the blessed token she, thing. Yeah. But, like, and then you do the top action, and you're like, this doesn't do anything. But, you know, give the Holy Spear to Zoe Samaras. And sure, yes, it's less efficient than some of the things we're going to see coming up on this list, but it's still, like, plus two fist and plus one damage, mm -hmm. like, endlessly is very powerful. And then you can just, like, attack for three damage very easily, too. Whoo! It's yeah. also fun. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just better than the, the butterfly swords. Yeah. I also like that it you always say it's the spear that killed Jesus. That's always fun, you know? Wow. Yeah. No, it is. It's uh, the spear that killed Christ. All right, on to our top five now. Number five here, we got the Sledgehammer level four. Uh, two hand slots. As an action fight, you get plus one fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. Triple action fight, you get plus five fists and deal plus five damage for this attack. Now, I think that like this, it's very similar to Holy Spear, right? Mm -hmm. Where it requires you to have like a plan for it. You're not just like, hey, I'm gonna play Sledgehammer or Holy Spear as my weapon. Because if you do, you're like giving up on the value that the card really actually has, right? Which is the bottom half of each of these cards. Yeah. Uh, Cause nothing kills like enemies better than that triple action. <laughs> No, it is a it is a hell of a drug, and you get that uh, that like gambler's rush every time you activate it, and you where you're just like, yeah, good. It's gonna spend all my Somet actions. Sometimes you die. Yeah. That, if if you didn't lose, sometimes like where where would the high come from? You know. Yeah. And like this one also works well with a uh, riot whistle, and mm -hmm. like um, even yeah, you gotta remember you have it though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like oh yeah, I could have. Is that what happened <laughs> once? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so bad um but also like it's just, just like it's fun it's flavorful and it just deals a hell of a lot of damage like that bottom action is a lot of damage yeah i wish you could play that with double or nothing but i understand why you can't yeah it's okay <laughs> i guess i am curious to see how sledgehammer evolves as more cards come out mm -hmm. right um, like, because if there's ever someone who can compress on actions, or like, it's gonna be juicy. I would also love to give this to a Tony Morgan one day. Go Tony, have fun. Yeah. But then Tony just uses it for the top action. You're like, no, that's not fun. Don't do that. Five times. Yeah. <laughs> Five of the top action. You can do three of the bottom. One of the bottom and two of the top. Tony's like, I don't care. Don't matter to me. Yeah. All right, number four. I actually forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, no, it's the upgrade in the channel blade. There we go. Yeah. Three costs, three experience. Uh, takes my hand slot on a spell slot. Three charges, fight. You get plus two fists with this attack. If you succeed, you may spend a charge to empower this blade, dealing plus one damage to this attack. If the blade is empowered and this attack defeats an enemy, draw one card and heal one horror. It's just a lot of words. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of good. You only spend the charge if you hit now. That's yeah. like why cards like Branica Thugga are so damn good because you only have to spend yeah. the charges yeah. if you succeed. On failure, it did not cost you anything. Yeah. Even if like if you hit another person, right? It's still mm -hmm. you're just like, ah, just take one. Um, the other thing is like, yeah, the damage output on this card is lower, but it gives you more. And it also only takes up one hand slot, which is incredibly relevant for cards, right? Because it allows you to then like have a variety of different weapons and do a variety of different things. Mm. Yeah, and healing horror is like 
usually the relevant one for guardians. Mm -hmm. They have a very easy time soaking meat damage, not so easy with horror. They mm -hmm. also typically start with, you know, five, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, also, it only costs three experience, only costs three to put out. Those are, like, low numbers for what yeah. the card does. Yeah. But it's a, it always comes down to it, because I put Enchanted Blade Zero in a lot of my decks, and then, like, I go into Scenario 8, and I'm looking at Enchanted Blade Zero still here, and I'm like, man, I always commit you to the cards, because <laughs> I'm just, like, I build around, like, more exciting weapons, but, like, this one, I think, um, apart from, like, probably our number one is just, like, a very efficient, like, one of the most yeah. efficient in this yeah, last it's also bit. it's also a relic, which means you get to kill ghosts with it. That's which big. Is, uh, like, yeah. sometimes very important. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, because level zero is also a relic, right? Yeah, the level zero is also a relic. It's very relevant. Uh, yeah. All right, now let's go to our number three, which is Cyclopean Hammer. Five cost, five experience. Takes up both hand slots. Fight, add your brain to your skill value with this attack. You deal plus one damage with this attack. If you succeed and the enemy is not elite, you may move at one location away from you. If you succeed by three or more, you may instead, you instead deal plus two damage and may move the enemy up to two locations away from you. Now, you're probably thinking this is number three and not number one because you're trying to make Travis mad. And I mean, like, that's just a happy accident. Mm -hmm. um, like, really, mm -hmm. but, like, sometimes it just works out. This one's mostly here because it costs five to play. Mm -hmm. And, like, the payoff is three damage, um, which you can get, as we're about to find out, without paying five and some other neat upsides. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, three damage every single action is very, it's very, very strong. Good. Like yeah. if you gave this to Tony, like, you know, Ermordath has got nothing. He's he's done. Mm -hmm. That's it. He doesn't even have a brain score to work with it. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And I mean, like, the plus side of Cyclopean Hammer is it, it allows like, it allows Mystics to fight. Like I love it in Dexter. I love it in Father Mateo. I hate it in Guardians. It's beyond boring. And I mean, like that's what also this is too, right? Like. I do think that Cyclopean Hammer is if you just strip down everything is just like the most efficient weapon in the game, right? I do think it has a lower ceiling than um, some cards we're going to be looking at in the near future. Um, but it is just like good and boring, but part of the ranking is just also like how much we enjoy playing with it. And I don't really like enjoy playing with yeah. Cyclopean Hammer. It's uh, like they say it's good. I've never played with it and I probably won't. Mm -hmm. um, not while the number one exists anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the second they taboo that into, like, being worse, mm -hmm. like, okay, fine, we're looking at this. Yeah. But, yeah. Sort of like that meme, you know, where you're walking down the street yeah. in somebody's hand, like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, I always, those are some of my favorites. Except for the astronaut <laughs> meme is probably my number one <laughs> favorite. And it was like... No one liked it when it was... Uh, it was a picture of soul sanctification. And then one of the astronauts was saying, wait a minute, this is just an, un it's an unexpected courage. And the guy with the gun behind him is like, always has been. And I like it, you know, I, it's because like, they're all unexpected courages. Yeah. Um, Everything is, this is, this even almost is. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, just the, the thing is as well is that like, cards obviously great, but it just does like, it's one thing very well, but there's some other things that, once we get to our number yeah. two, that just, I think, do, does it better. You ever just want to play this in Diana Stanley and be like, I fight it for? Yes. Yeah, that would be... Like, just no cards yeah, in the base. That's what like, Tasty right. Toast is like, yes, 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 yes. And then also throw some uh, freaking Empower Selfs in there. Yes! <laughs> now we're talking. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Our number two is Runic Axe. So this is the newest one from Scarlet Keys, and it does a crap ton of stuff. I can't even pull out so the many things. Yeah. So you get uh, you get like, what is it? It's one to make it like cost one less. This and be, a be a relic. relic. Yep. Um, which is not a relic by default, which is a little strange given that it's a magic axe. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a bunch of like inscriptions that you can use by spending charges. Yeah. So right and, now there's uh, yeah there's accuracy and power which are yeah. on the level zero. So it's a four cost takes up both hand slots. It's a zero cost to start though. Uh, it comes with two charges, and they replenish those charges each round. Uh, plus two fist for no, his one, accuracy. One oh, yeah, one of them. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And then power is plus one damage. Other inscriptions are glory, which if you defeat an enemy, you heal a horror or draw a card, I believe. I think you can heal it. You might be able to heal, heal a damage, damage as well. Uh, there's elders, which if you succeed, you get a... If you succeed by sh shroud or greater, you get to discover a clue. There is fury, which you get to deal one damage to each enemy engaged mm -hmm. with you. There that is hunt... Really which allows you to either engage or move before taking the action. 
And then there are a variety of things that bump up the yeah. inscri- yeah, the, 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 the charge part of it. Yeah, you got one that makes it so that it recharges two charges every turn instead mm-hmm. of... One, one that makes it so that for every one charge spent, you get to choose two inscriptions instead of one. Mm-hmm. And one that makes it so that you can choose the same inscription more than once. Yeah, up to three times, I think. Um, just cool. Mm-hmm. This is way cooler than the Cyclopean Hammer any day. It's way cooler than the Cyclopean Hammer, and I also, as I was saying, I think it's just, like, better. I think it's actually a legitimately better weapon, and it's more fair as well like it feels like you actually have to like make decisions you know it's not just i swing the hammer um yeah like the hunt the hunt inscription is kind of nuts it's yeah. um, where you just get you don't have to spend actions moving because why would you want to do that it's yeah, it's it's the best thing like oh i need to be closer to my seeker and i just drew a ghoul okay i'm gonna spend uh an action uh, uh, i'm gonna a charge fight, i'm gonna fight the ghoul and move <laughs> while i'm fighting it and even just, yeah. like, the ability to just engage an enemy with it is very powerful. Mm-hmm. Fury has its homes, right? Yeah. But just yeah, dealing you'll, a... You'll know when that one's good. ...a bunch of damage. And I, I wasn't a believer of it at first, but in an <laughs> upcoming ca- campaign that we're recording, I'm a goddamn believer of Fury now. I'm also a big yeah. believer of Elder as well. I used to not be. I was like, this one's probably the weakest one. I love Glory as well. Just healing is good. But I built a deck, which was Lily Chen, and you play Runic Axe, and you just put on... You bump up your brain and your fist, like Brother Xavier, Bandolier, Holy Rosary. And you uh, just put on Enchant Weapon. And then you grab the Ancient Power uh, upgrade, which allows you to do three of one. You fight oh, an yeah. enemy, do three Elders, kill the enemy, get... Uh, Take all get, the clues. To get three like, clues. Oh, it's, no. it, it, there's just so much more that you can do with this weapon. Mm-hmm. And like while the customizable cards, they're very word chunky... I think that this is where this is where the excitement of at least this card comes in is that the different discoveries that you can do, the different investigators are able to explore with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool card. Yeah. All right. And our number one, if you were paying attention, you'll know what it is. And you might be like, what the hell? Survival Knife 2. Two cost, hand slot, fight. You get plus two fist with this attack. It's a reaction when an enemy attacks you during the enemy phase. Before resolve that enemy, before that enemy attacks, you get exhaust survival knife, fight. This attack targets the attacking enemy. You get plus two fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. It's just good. Yep. Um, there are not a whole lot of other one-handed weapons that I would ever be like, yeah, I would like to have two of these in play. Mm-hmm. But this one, this one's good. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, yeah. You might be better off with like one of the big uh, the big two handers and then like this in a bandolier because you end up with more damage output overall. Mm-hmm. But uh, two of these still kind of does the job. Because I mean, like what it makes up for. I I I I did a run where I was Zoe and I was just like I was like, do I play my second survival knife here? And the answer now for me is always yes because it saves you so much on actions. You just get to do other things and then you just move into a location and you just like kill the enemy before it kills you. It's very powerful. It was the one that both Britt and I were like, we were both like, we're very hot on this card. So that's why I got the number one. But I truly think that this card is one of, it's in the top three of the strongest melee guardian weapons, I think. Yeah, and I mean, like, personally, I often find myself upgrading this one very, well, not very often, actually. Um, Just playing the level zero because I'm trying to do something stupid with a like a rifle or whatever. <laughs> but uh, you just can upgrade this one. Like I often forget that I could just upgrade this to this and like kind of forget whatever stupid plan I had to do deal with monsters because yeah. I could just do this. Yeah, yeah. And it also gives you a plus two for just a basic fight. Mm-hmm. Well, not a basic fight, but like a well printed very, fight. Very yeah. similar, yeah. You yeah. can't uh, you can't like punch a guy so hard he explodes. With you it, can't but... do that, no. <laughs> yeah, and it does also like pitch for two fist icons. So if you draw it while well, you have you know the rest of your setup in play, it's just an overpower. Yeah, yeah, no problem. It costs nothing to two mm. to put out. Yeah, what what really gives this the nudge is like it's the lack of opportunity cost here like you can do this and still do whatever other sort of stupid other plan you have yeah or cool other plan i'm not here to tell you whatever it is you're doing is bad and wrong Mm -hmm. yeah that's travis's job (laughs) it is true it is true i'm here to make the bad jokes uh i also like a a world where uh, i'm just picturing it now like you had a bandolier you're holding a runic axe you're hunting and like you know just moving around grabbing enemies and then you're just like 
you know, just taking them out. It's just, it's just I think it's just, it's just yeah. damn efficient. Like, it's just like the numbers on it are really good for what it does for you. And which is why I think like, I think it's a, it's a good number one. Do I think it's stronger than Cyclopean Hammer? Yes. And do I think it's better than Cyclopean Hammer? No. I think yeah, Cyclopean like, Hammer is a better card, but I think like Survival Knife is just a stronger card overall. Yeah. Yeah. Like Cyclopean Hammer might be a stronger card or even the Runic Axe might be a stronger card in a vacuum, mm -hmm. but um, during the actual course of play. You don't have to struggle to put these in your deck. You don't mm -hmm. have to struggle to put them into play because they cost two. Mm -hmm. You get half that every turn. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like one of those things with yeah. like the dominoes, right? Where yeah. like yeah, just like all the, like, it's not stronger than many other weapons, but uh, like it's real easy to play with. Yeah, I think that's that's why Arkham is so interesting, right? Because you know I can already see people in the comments now being like, "What the fuck? Cyclopean like Hammer is not number one." But like, there's a lot of moving pieces that I think make it so that some cards are just like better for other people than that and i mean brit and i both agreed on this one so screw you <laughs> yeah i don't know to me it's mostly like if you're playing a five costed weapon it's really hard to be doing something else in your deck yeah because you won't have xp to pay for it mm -hmm. but survival knife survival knife just shows up and like does the job oh yeah and doesn't even ask for thanks like cyclopean hammer does no. <laughs> like Cyclopean hammer's a needy even runic axe is a bit needy you know so your survival knife's just happy to be here uh, so, uh, everyone watching, what are your favorite uh, number one guardian melee weapons? And if you want to see us do this for, like, there's less for it, but, like, we could do Survivor and Rogue as well, um, because yeah. they also have them. There are less of it, but I'd be happy to do it. Yeah, Survivor probably ends up with all its weapons lumped together, because um, I don't think there's really enough of them to divide it into firearms yeah. and Yeah, and just do them all. Yeah. Rank all the... Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, that could be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, won't, we aren't going to rank the seeker weapons because they don't exist we try i tried looking i was yeah. telling brin but i couldn't find yeah. any sorry everybody thanks for watching have a good one and as always a ggs